We're going to take a look at some of the upright sedum varieties today. We'll take a walk through our landscape, some of the various gardens, and show you some of the brilliant flower color, the leaf color, and the different size ranges. That's one of the greatest thing about the stone crop sedums. So yeah, the stone crop, that's another one of the common names, stone crop. I tend to use the name sedum as the common name. That's also the Latin genus scientific name. Perhaps they got that common name because the sedums being used so commonly in the stone or rock gardens due to their preference for the dry, warm, even hot planting locations. Before we get going on this tour, I want to quick mention, I did an in-studio video on some of the sedums that we're going to look at today, but I'm excited to walk you through our gardens and take a live look at some of the just great different upright sedums. Let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our first variety, the conga line sedum. The conga line, it changes colors throughout the season as those leaves change from a green to purple and then into a burgundy and then the flowers go from peach, coral and cream. This is going to reach about 20 inches tall, which is about the height that it's at right now. The next one, this little shorter variety, this one's only going to get about six inches tall. This is called dynamite. Even though it only gets about that six inches tall, it will reach, oh, I'm going to say at least a foot wide, but look at these deep rose flowers and it's got that reddish foliage that's going to continue to turn more and more throughout the season. It goes from that green to purple to red. And now let's take a look at one of my favorite named sedums, the neon. Yeah, just a real characteristic name for a plant that just it sticks out like a neon light with that vibrant pink on those lime green leaves. And then this also gets a gold fall color, which is quite characteristic. As we look through these various sedums in this collection here, look at all the honeybees, just an absolute favorite for them in the fall. One of the reasons I love growing the sedum is that we actually have a hive that we take care of in our landscape and gardens. These flower heads also are supported on a really sturdy stem, and that's important on some of the larger sedums that we're gonna look at as we go through them one by one. Let's go ahead and work our way over to our next collection of sedum. We were having trouble getting other flowering perennials established in this location due to that overhang on the house causing it to be quite a bit drier. But it's working out beautifully for these sedums since they'll do great in those hot, dry areas. We had this one written down in our records as razzleberry, but I'm pretty sure it's dazzleberry. Again, this is going to be one of the shorter varieties that we're going to talk about. Could almost put it in that sprawling category, but I think anytime it's over six inches, I kind of put it into that upright category. As you can see, as we come in close on this one, it's got a nice raspberry pink flower. And I'm going to say it's got kind of a muted, dusty foliage throughout the season. This one can also get, oh, I'm going to say 12 to 15 inches wide. And next up is Autumn Fire. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. It's got this star-shaped rosy pink flower. And early on when they first start opening up, they almost look, in my opinion, kind of like candy canes. This is very similar to Autumn Joy, one of the more common sedums still sold in garden centers, nurseries. We're going to take a look at it in just a little bit, but this has got just a little bit bigger flowers and I think just a little bit deeper pink. The Autumn Fire, this can get up to about two feet by two feet. And it's again, just another absolutely great pollinator for those honeybees. And now we're going to take a look at one of the darker leaf varieties. This is Rock and Grow Back in Black. This one's just starting to fill out, but it holds that dark foliage all season. We're going to look at another one in just a little bit called Dark Magic. It has a more of a deep purplish foliage. This one can also get up into that two foot range and the flowers will range anywhere between that red, pink, with a little bit of a hint of white on it. Here's another great name, Thunderhead. Yeah, this one gets some pretty big flowers, also is going to get up in that two feet to 30 inches, so a nice large sedum. But look at how deep rose pink that flower is. The Thunderhead also has really stout, upright stems with a really nice grayish green foliage. I don't think I mentioned it yet that we are in the first week of September here, Northern Great Plains Zone 4. And you'll notice that many of the sedums we'll be looking at are in full bloom, while others are just getting started. So you'll get a longer bloom period if you grow several different varieties. And just around the corner, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that dark magic sedum. I mentioned when we were talking about the back and black, we'll cut through our pathway here with the weeping Norway spruce. 
This was originally just one plant, but you can see where it gets its name, Dark Magic Sedum. It has that deep purple color. Now, this was originally just one plant. So out of all the sedums we're going to look at today, this is actually self-seeded, naturalized in quite a few different areas in our landscape. One of the reasons it's able to do that, I've mentioned in quite a few of my other videos when we talk about landscaping, rocking, mulching, I really don't use any poly or fabric underneath my rock. Now, initially that can cause some weed problems that first year, but after that, my opinion is the maintenance really isn't all that hard. If we had poly or fabric underneath that rock, you might get a seedling to germinate, but it probably isn't gonna be able to sustain itself. Sedum work great in rock gardens because of their ability to tolerate those hot, dry conditions. One of the favorite places that gardeners will put them. Let's go ahead. We're gonna cut through the pathway here and you're gonna see one more of the dark magic. Look at that coming up right where that hosta is. Initially, it had a lot more room to grow, but now that that hosta has gained quite a bit of size throughout the season, it looks like it might get choked out. We always have the option of transplanting it. Okay, this next one has a nice variegated foliage, a greenish white right up there in the water feature. Put it underneath that buckeye tree, autumn charm. Just starting to open up those flowers and check out that foliage. Yeah, completely different to the different green, the different purple. So a nice contrast, a nice variation. Those white flower buds, they're gonna open up into a rosy pink and then brick red tones will develop as we progress into the fall. So a nice variation of flower colors to look forward to, contrasting with those variegated leaves. Even though those flowers aren't completely open, the bees are already getting started, getting that pollen, just a beautiful thing to watch. And when we were talking about the autumn fire, we mentioned autumn joy, one of the more common sedums in the industry. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Starting to compete with this spruce tree here, Blue Horizon Colorado Spruce. That's actually a variety that I'm keeping it sheared. I wanna keep it compact, that nice upright conical shape. So that Autumn Joy, it's gonna be okay there because we'll keep that spruce foliage cut back. You can see a little bit different pink color than what we saw with the Autumn Fire. So even though the Autumn Joy and that Autumn Fire are quite similar, a little bit different flower color, about the same size in that two foot range. And here again, the bees will be busy, I bet, oh gosh, over a month on these flowers. And here's another shorter variety, Evolution Purple Crush. Look at those dark red flower buds that once they open, they'll be pink along with the bluish green foliage that you see here. And another purple variety, we didn't have it written down in our records, but I wanna show you this sedum to illustrate the importance of a sturdy stem. Now this might well be falling over because it's starting to get shaded under this larch. So it might be stretching for the sun, doesn't have the ability to develop that sturdy stem. And not knowing what variety this is, I'm just giving you an overall generalization that sedum like the sun, they're gonna develop better in the sun for you. Now, if you like the sedum group, I'm gonna encourage you to take a look at this earlier video I put together on Diane's wonderful collection of ground cover sedums. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that. Let's swing around right behind us here under this beautiful bonnie blue spruce that we've got growing here, wonderful spruce. You can take a look at that on one of the videos I did on the Colorado spruce we've got growing around the yard. But there it is, double martini sedum. This double martini is on our list to be moved this fall, it's starting to get a little bit choked out from the bonnie blue spruce. It's also on the north side. And since we're getting that shade, it just doesn't have the coloring that it used to. So we're gonna find a spot for this and get it in the full sun. But one of the great characteristics is that it's got these maroon stems on these olive green leaves throughout the season. And it's got a nice, I don't know, different variation of the flower, much smaller pink flowers and 18 inches is considered about the average height on that. That's about exactly what we've got going here. And before we take a little bit longer walk to one of our next sedums, let's take a look at one more autumn fire sedum. Tucked in there again, probably gonna start putting itself in a position where we might have to move it as that spruce gains its size. But for now, it's doing beautifully, getting enough sun in that location. 
Okay, let's go ahead. We'll walk down this garden bed, maybe point out a few interesting plants as we go along the red balloon by burning a prairie statesman, Swiss stone pine. That's one of the Leatris wildflowers there. Did a recent video on that as well, on some tall perennials. Wichita blue, a nice juniper, got a columnar hackberry right there. Still working on a video on this bed. We rejuvenated it. And there you can see off in the distance with the pink flowers. Let's talk about another taller variety, the Matrona sedum. One of my favorite things about the Matrona is that fleshy, kind of light green, olive green leaf with a little bit of a hint of that red vein in the leaf, but a nice pink flower almost has that broccoli look to it. And if you've noticed throughout the different seedings we've been looking at, look at how just how calm those bees are. That's one of the great things, even though they draw in the pollinator, they're not aggressive. I've never been stung working or being around some of these different sedum varieties. If you like reading about and looking at photos of perennials, winter is coming by the way, make sure you check out the Walters Gardens website. Just a great resource for plant enthusiasts. That brings us to the end of the tour of the upright sedums. I appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you again next video.